Western capital is welcome in China, but China no longer needs Western capital markets. Here is another war that is taking place in the world of finance between China and the United States. This might be the most important war China needs to win in order to become the number one world superpower. Western capital is welcome in China, but China no longer needs Western capital markets, as one of the Chinese officials said. You get the point. Chinese firms no longer will go to Wall Street to raise funds, but China is happy to allow the Western firms invest in Chinese markets. Here are the key points of this video article. 5 of the top 10 mergers and acquisition deals are struck by Western banks in China. Some financial analysts with decades of experience say none of the Western banks really have anything to offer China. Chinese learned everything the American banks had to teach about how to run an investment banking operation. And now they don't need Western banks. With more money flowing into China, trading and asset management will be huge growth areas for Western banks in China. Foreign purchases of Chinese stocks on the mainland accounted for 15% of the total flows in the third quarter of 2021, up from just 3% in 2013, according to Morgan Stanley. Global banks and money managers could eventually take 10% of the mutual fund market in China over five years. Given the important position that China plays economically in the world, you can't be Goldman Sachs without participating in that, David Solomon said at the Bloomberg New Economy Forum in Singapore in November 2021. Goldman Sachs CEO David Solomon was among almost 30 business leaders who participated in a one-hour video call on December 15, 2021 with Chinese Premier Li Keqiang to discuss a range of topics including China's reopening plans. According to Goldman Sachs President John Waldron, asset management is the biggest opportunity in China. China represents one of the largest opportunities in the world for many of our clients and for JP Morgan, says JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon. Before we continue, if you like what we talk about on this channel and if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. I'll give you a few seconds to do that and then we'll continue. Wall Street loves China more than ever. Despite political tensions and Beijing's regulatory crackdowns, last year in 2021, banks and money managers desperately want to compete on the mainland China. As tensions were rising between the United States and China in summer 2021, the chief executive officer of JP Morgan was letting it be known that he wanted to get to Hong Kong as soon as he could. Jamie Dimon did just that in November 2021, becoming the first major US bank executive to visit Greater China since the pandemic began. His 32-hour trip to the Asian financial hub was billed as a chance to thank thousands of employees there, but it was also a reminder of the company's commitment to the territory, as well as to mainland China, where JP Morgan has exposure of about $20 billion, mainly from lending, deposits, trading and investments. Some US politicians have been calling for companies to back away from China over concerns about national security and human rights, but Wall Street banks are instead deepening their ties. JP Morgan in August took full control of a securities joint venture with Chinese company and now wants to do the same with an asset management business it partly owns. Morgan Stanley is seeking five new banking licenses in mainland China in 2022, while Goldman Sachs has been doubling its workforce. Citigroup applied in December 2021 for a securities trading and investment banking permit and plans to seek a future license in 2022, adding 100 employees in the country in all. Both the United States and Chinese governments have cracked down on Chinese companies listing their shares in New York, hurting a lucrative business that was driven from Hong Kong. But US banks that want a piece of the world's second largest economy and second biggest issuer of equities are shifting gears to take on China's top lenders on their own turf. 
I don't think we have a choice, said Goku Laroy, CEO of Morgan Stanley's Asia-Pacific operations, describing the bank's decision to think of China as one big opportunity and to compete for business on the mainland as well as offshore. Even though global banks haven't made much money in China yet, the potential upside is massive, he says. If you keep saying I'm not going to invest in the domestic platforms because they are not as profitable, I think you are missing a trick, he said. Wall Street had long eyed China as the last great money making frontier, and 2021 was supposed to be the year companies' vast investments would start to bear fruit. Foreign banks had just been given the right to take full control of their joint ventures and set up their own asset management businesses. But before the year even began, Beijing scrapped Ant Group's $35 billion initial public offering at the last minute, depriving firms including JP Morgan and Citigroup of almost $400 million in fees. Then a regulatory squeeze on sectors from technology to education and property curbed demands for IPOs. In addition, the United States is strengthening financial disclosure rules for Chinese companies listing shares on American exchanges. China's policymakers are forcing ride-hailing company Didi Global to delist in the United States, citing concerns about control over company data, and are tightening a loophole that has facilitated dozens of US IPOs. The result? A 52% drop in listings by value of Chinese companies in 2021, cutting fees for banks such as Goldman that took Didi and another company's public in New York. That business had been so strong that banks tallied more than $1 billion in IPO fees in 2020 from Chinese companies listing in the US, before slumping 42% in 2021 to $625 million. While the New York freeze may be temporary, it's becoming clear that Chinese companies have less need to raise money abroad when they can easily list in Hong Kong or via the growing exchanges in Shanghai or Shenzhen. Peter Alexander, who has been advising global asset managers in China for almost two decades, says a senior China official recently made that point to him. He said, Peter, tell your clients we will more than welcome their capital, but we no longer need their capital markets. Moving further into China's domestic market is fraught with risk. State-owned brokerages have extensive teams on the ground doing deals with established Chinese companies and startups. Global financial firms posted a combined loss in the mainland of $48 million in 2020, compared with $24.4 billion in profits at China's investment banks, according to filings. A look at deal-making rankings shows foreign banks haven't made significant inroads in China after years of trying. Goldman ranked 15th in domestic Chinese equity raising in 2021. Foreign banks have never cracked the local bond market. Though they do better for China, mergers and acquisitions with five in the top 10 for 2021. None of these companies really have anything to offer China and the local market, says Dick Bove, an analyst at Odeon Capital Group, who has been covering Wall Street for decades and cites the league tables as evidence. They learned everything the American banks to teach about how to run an investment bank in operation, and now they don't need them. Global bankers say they are just getting started with new license to expand on their own after decades with local partners, and that gaining just a fraction of the $4 to $5 trillion market would lead to windfalls. They also say that with more money flowing into China, trading and asset management will be huge growth areas. Foreign purchase of Chinese stocks on the mainland counted for 15% of the total flows in the third quarter of 2021, up from just 3% in 2013. Global banks and money managers could eventually take 10% of the mutual fund market in China over five years, says Jasper Yip at Oliver Wyman in Hong Kong. Despite all this potential, US financial companies are taking hit over China at home. Utah Senator Mitt Romney has called hedge fund billionaire Redalio's investments in China a sad moral lapse, while Florida Senator Rick Scott accused bankers of placing profits above human rights. This modern gold rush into China by the big Wall Street banks in hopes of fat profits raises numerous concerns, says Mark Williams, a professor at Boston University and a former Federal Reserve Bank examiner. Growing U.S. tensions with China has increased political risk and the likelihood of trade sanctions and abrupt policy changes that could hold planned expansion. Wall Street remains undaunted and demands not the only CEO who has been eager to get on a plane. David Solomon of Goldman Sachs has been saying he'll go to the country as soon as it's allowed. 
Given the important position that China plays economically in the world, you can't be Goldman Sachs without participating in that, Solomon said at the Bloomberg New Economy Forum in Singapore in November 2021. He said there has been no direct pressure on the bank to alter course in China, though that could change. But we think about with this 10-20-30 year perspective, not with the next couple of years. Solomon was among almost 30 business leaders who participated in a one-hour video call on December 15, 2021 with Premier Li Keqiang to discuss a range of topics including China's reopening plans. Recent Goldman Sachs deals in China include its participation in the $4 billion Shanghai IPO of Beijing Limited, a biotech company, its first co-invested deal on China's technology stock board, and after a 17-year wait, the bank now owns its securities business in China. That gives it free reign to pursue a growth strategy that includes doubling its workforce to 600 and ramping up in asset management, which President John Waldron has called the biggest opportunity in China. Global asset managers are joining the push into China's 24.4 trillion yuan, 3.8 trillion dollars mutual fund market. BlackRock raised $1 billion in September 2021 for its first China fund, while Paris-based Amundi aims to double assets under management in the greater China area, including Hong Kong and Taiwan, to $250 billion by 2025. Beijing's push to steer individuals away from property investment will give an additional boost to these funds, says Xiu Feng Zhang, the company's chairman for the region. Still, not all big money managers are enthusiastic about their chances. Vanguard Group scrapped its plan to apply for a fund license last year in 2021. China has become an extremely difficult business opportunity to navigate, says Alexander, the consultant to fund companies who is managing director at Zibian Advisors Limited in Shanghai. Morgan Stanley had been more cautious in the mainland market than some rivals, but it boosted stakes in its joint venture securities business to almost 100% in 2021, and Laroy says it plans to apply for futures, derivatives, brokerages, research, and market-making licenses in 2022. Among other things, Morgan Stanley intends to provide foreign exchange and interest rate hedging services, along with market-making for international and domestic institutional clients in stocks and bonds. JP Morgan, meanwhile, became the first foreign bank to take full control of its securities unit in China in year 2021 as part of its broader push into the country. If we have the licenses and we control them, then the business will come, says Philippe Pogori, the bank's CEO for Asia Pacific. You need all the cylinders to fire to make it work. It's not a single business strategy. The bank has been charging ahead ever since Dimon, who joked that his bank will outlast the Chinese Communist Party before walking back his remarks, gathered executives in Hong Kong in 2016. He told them he envisioned an office in China that matched the bank's tower in New York, according to people familiar with the matter. That hasn't happened yet, but after the bank won approval to buy its securities partner, Demon said, China represents one of the largest opportunities in the world for many of our clients and for JP Morgan. Just before you leave, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing, of course, if you like the things we talk about on this channel. Thank you. Till next time. Bye.